Hi guys, Dr. Hampton here with Dr. Brett Schur, author of his wonderful book, The Best Health Ever, and medical director of The Diet Doctor, which is the number one low-carb website in the world. With so much controversy about whether a low-fat or low-carb diet is best for helping you achieve metabolic health, I thought it would be kind of cool to bring an internationally known and respected cardiologist to clarify which dietary approach may be best for you. Dr. Schur, do me a favor and tell us what the current evidence is saying about this topic. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, and when you talk about what does the evidence say, there's so much scientific evidence out there looking at cardiovascular risk. And part of the problem is how do you define cardiovascular risk? Because most of these studies, you can't follow people for 20 or 30 years and see who has heart attacks. So you have to use different what we call surrogate markers. And part of the problem is so much focus of the surrogate marker has been on LDL cholesterol, that that is first and foremost the, the primary marker that we need to consider. And really for some people, maybe the only marker we need to consider. But now the, I think the evidence, the, the tide of evidence is starting to change. We're starting to realize the benefits of metabolic health and how important metabolic health is in many circumstances, even more important than LDL cholesterol. So there's this one slide here, which I think sums it up so well. When you compare low carb and low fat diets, what you see is body mass tends to go down more on low carb diets, but not just weight in general. It's more about the abdominal fat or even the, the visceral fat tends to go down more on low carb diets. And that's so important because when you talk about body fat, it really is that abdominal fat and the visceral fat that correlates more with negative health, health outcomes, including cardiovascular risk down the road. So any diet that's going to lower that is going to be beneficial. But also when you talk about cholesterol, it's not just LDL, it's also your triglycerides and your HDL. And what they say, not only about your lipids, but what they say about your metabolic health. And when it comes to lowering triglycerides and raising HDL, there is no lifestyle intervention that's better than a low carb diet. And that's what this slide also shows, uh, dramatic improvement in the triglycerides, the HDL, and of course the triglyceride, the HDL ratio. But also, even if you are concerned about LDL, we know that ApoB or apolipoprotein B is a better marker than LDL and when you look at that ApoB to ApoA1 ratio, which is sort of like a, a better version of the LDL to HDL ratio, that that Im also improves on a low-carb diet compared to a low-fat diet. And then we can take it even one step further and say, okay, well, what type of LDL particles do we have? And it's well known that the smaller, denser LDL particles are the riskier particles. They increase the risk more for having cardiovascular disease. Because remember, it's not LDL that's the concern, it's the heart attacks and the strokes that are con the concern. And the small LDL are more prone to cause those. And again, for a lifestyle intervention to reduce your small dense LDL, low carb diets are likely the best thing out there. And as this slide shows, certainly better than low fat diets. And then of course, the other very common conception for metabolic health is what is your glucose and what is your insulin. And that's the next step that, that we really need to take is it's not just looking at your glucose, but it's also looking at your insulin because the insulin is the canary in the coal mine. And that shows that you're having metabolic dysfunction long before your glucose goes up. And as, as this slide shows, low carb diets are much more beneficial than low fat diets for reducing both glucose and insulin. So, so I think one of the summaries is that we have to broaden our focus to think more about metabolic health and other cardiovascular risk factors. And boy, when we do that, we sure have to appreciate the benefits that low carb diets provide. Yeah, I love this slide. Uh, when I saw you present it, um, I just thought it was a nice way to just put things in perspective. So what I see here is that there's good news and that both dietary approaches actually work, but it looks like the low carb diet is overall the winner, at least as it relates to this, these studies. And so it sounds like, so rather a person is a low carb, uh, you know, person or a, a low fat person, I think they're fine as long as they don't eat the sad diet, better known as the standard American diet. So I really, I really hope this video provides some clarity. I just really want to get this slide in front of people. And if you have a clinician who's still apprehensive about 
a low carb or keto diet, make sure to show this share this video with them because I think it'll add tremendous value. I also recommend Dr. Eric Westman's video entitled Doctors Listen Up. That's on YouTube and I'll provide a link in the show notes. And finally, an article that my guests actually helped write uh, on the diet doctor entitled The Science of Low Carb and Keto. So I hope that added value. Um, And Dr. Brett Sure, I appreciate your time today. My pleasure. And so until we meet again, Oh, yeah, most definitely. And again, guys, until we meet again, be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.